Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Artcasters number four. I'm sorry, not four. <laughs> three forty nine. Getting a little ahead of myself. Three forty nine. Almost at three fifty. Wow, that's seems like it wasn't that long ago we were at we were we hit three hundred, but we're move, we're moving on up. So, um, so uh, we we got it. We got a we got two returning guests. One who hasn't been on in a long time, so we're happy to have him back. Um, but uh, we'll get to them in a minute. We're going to do what we always do. We'll just kind of go around the room um introduce ourselves talk about anything we have currently going on and then uh and then we'll dive into our topic so uh i'll kick it off uh, i'm scott with Cirkworks. uh you will find me here on on my youtube channel where you can also find making comics 101 it's my series on how to make comics it's uh basically a step-by-step -step. everything you want to know about making comics from coming up with the ideas all the way to printing publishing and everything in between and it's basically a free course on youtube that you can you can go through. Um, so it's uh, pretty informative. So check that out. Also on my store at cirqueworks.com, uh, my Black Friday sale is like, like you guys predicted. I always forget to turn it off. So <laughs> it's still going. I can't say for how long, but it's still going 50% off all my digital products. That includes my comics, um, everything. The current issue of Young and the Dead that just came out from Kickstarter, it's, it's not up there yet, but everything else is, including my um, digital packs for making comics. Um, so you'll never get it cheaper than it is now. So if you want to get any of those, go definitely go check those out at cirqueworks.com. Uh, and then I'm going to kind of move around and, uh, clockwise to Josh, Josh, what's been going on in your world? Awesome. All right. So, um, I got a package in the mail that I wanted to shout out, uh, from a Kickstarter. So yeah, we have a... to, <laughs> we have to talk a little bit about what happened. To... <laughs> this is the second time I sent that out. So yeah. So I sent out a bunch of Kickstarters and I got one, one of them came back. Um, the only thing that came back was a label. <laughs> no, nothing else but the label saying, oh, we're sorry, yeah, your product, your, your package got damaged. And it was, of course, one of the few that had an original sketch in it. I'd done this Ghostbusters sketch who I guess is like destroyed now. Um, but uh, Josh was kind enough to opt for another one. Um, so I gave him a different one. And I think I threw a, a couple extras in there just because of the, you know, so he got the LO cool J sketch instead of the ghostbusters one, but yeah. anyway, so, so I think they all went, there's only one who hasn't responded, but everyone else should have there. So if you don't, if you back that and you don't have yours, um, let me know. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Um, I can't wait to read the new issue too. So after, after the con, I'm going to gonna be rocking that business yeah, tell me what anyhow um yeah i will um i'm sure it'll be awesome um and then uh so um i have jacob's apartment my graphic novel um that is uh if you took eternal sunshine for the spotless mind put it in a blender with ghost world um and you know we're interested in reading a uh, slice of life doomed romance uh, comic Jacob's apartment is out and available in bookstores everywhere. You should ask your local library to carry it or your local bookstore to order it, but um, also just pick one up. Um, and then uh, I'm pretty excited about this, but I'll be doing LA comic con um, this whole weekend too. So stop by my booth. I wish I knew my booth number, but it was a very last minute ad uh, for the con. So um you'll just see me in artist alley um but uh, i don't think i'll be alone um and i think there's going to be other people we might be talking to soon that will be there um also pick up two stories i'll be selling those at uh la comic-con and doing sketches and drawings and stuff and i'm signing and all that fun stuff so yeah awesome okay we got fresh from he's out of the garage finally and he's got looks like he's got a cool new backdrop we got cory kerr <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a warmer in my anymore. I'm wearing a t-shirt in my <laughs> yeah. studio. You are wearing a really cool t-shirt. I love it. <laughs> oh, hey, look at that. Oh. Uh, now I feel the... Now Where I feel can they the, get that t-shirt? I feel the urge to uh, to have a cat fight now. Um, <clears throat> no, we... Uh, yeah, you can get that at CoreyCare.com. It's uh, the only product I have for sale right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, uh, I moved out of the garage, which is nice because it is... Uh, the night I moved out, it was, uh, three degrees that morning. Um, and so, so I, I had reached the saturation point of layers and electric blankets and, uh, everything that you could do, uh, in a garage where you're five feet from a non-insulated metal door. 
uh, to, to survive. And so Corey, I'm relieved as one of your co-hosts hearing that. Cause like the last few art casters have been a little uncomfortable. It's like, as we're talking, you're gradually turning blue and like freezing. <laughs> <Right>. it was, <laughs> so it's, it's nice to know you'll be in insulation again. Yeah. Like my breath is like fogging up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Anyway, you can find my stuff, uh, including the things I'm working on like this, at uh, CoreyKerr.com. That's just my name.com. And then uh, I've got a newsletter that you should get on. And if you're tired of uh, algorithms and weird billionaires doing toddler tech things, you should you should jump onto Mastodon with me because it's, it's better over there. So. All right. Okay. Uh, on to one of our returning guests who's uh, just coming up. Well, maybe I don't want to get into that, but he's been a little under the weather, but he's back. So, uh, Jim, you're how's gonna, it going? You're going to give away my health information. <laughs> yes. That's a HIPAA violation. <laughs> but yes, I'm I'm uh, working on uh, COVID. Uh, it's a new thing. Uh, I don't know if you heard about it. It's going around. All the kids are, are loving it. I hear it's gone viral. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a, real, it's a real hoot. So, um, yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm COVID free and, uh, working on, um, my new film, by the way, I'm going to take like 40 minutes to introduce myself. Okay. Um, working on my, uh, new film, animated film called, uh, the night eats its own. It's almost done. And a, and a trailer is coming in the next couple weeks. Um, and uh, oh, also working on my new project uh, called El Muerto Blue. Um, <laughs> it's this little thing that I came up with um, all by myself. I'm very proud of it. So um, that, that's coming along. And also, well, the, you should make a movie of that. that seems well, like a movie. I might start with maybe a comic book and then a graphic novel and then a movie. You know, you know, you, you should cast in that. That, that yeah. one kid from that 70s show? Mm. Oh, Ashton Kutcher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that one. But I'm also working on this, The Slugger. It's my latest chick track. <laughs> so, um, so, uh, other than that, I'm just here to, uh, to support uh, artists because contractually, that's why I'm here. So. Okay. <laughs> All right. And to our second returning guest, who it's been a little while since he's been on, but Javier Hernandez back. Uh, I I know that is something friend of mine. I get lots when you follow people on Kickstarter, you get alerts. And my friend Eric, Hill, um, I think the new El Morto, Javier's got a new book out on Kickstarter. So I definitely want to check that out. So um, and then I, I figured you might want some help promoting that. So uh, we invited you to come on the show because it's been too long. So how's it going, Hav? And uh, let everyone know about the, the Kickstarter and, and what's going on with that. Yeah, thanks, Scott. It's great to be back. And uh, unlike certain people, I don't have COVID or I don't think I've had it for the last two years. Careful, you're right it's next like to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm glad Jim's not going to be at LA Comic Con uh, this weekend, but I'll see Josh there. I will be there at a Artist Alley table F36. Awesome. So hopefully Josh ain't too far. Um, yeah, so... Um, I have a YouTube channel. I started it probably since last time I was on Scott's show, um, I think a year or two ago, during COVID, actually. You know, a lot of people started like something new for COVID, learn guitar or whatever for pandemic. I finally did my, uh, started a YouTube channel, um, mostly just kind of looking through books. And uh, it's called Los Comics TV, um, comics, C O M E X, Los Comics. And the last two episodes, I actually did something that Jim Luhan's a big fan of. Jim Luhan's a big fan of. I'm doing like a creator commentary where I'm literally going through like my graphic novel. And I have the camera above and I'm just giving out some, you know, DVD style commentary on, you know, where this name came from or what that thing is in the background and just sharing out some secrets. So um, I've done two of the books and I'm going to do the third one um, probably on Monday after the con, the long, the long con. I'm looking forward to LA Comic Con. I'm glad to be a guest and everything. But I'm not looking forward to doing a three-day show. I mean, I haven't yeah. done a three-day show in three years. Uh, having done a two-day show. Yeah, I've done two-day shows. But and then the hours are so long. Again, I'm not dissing the con. It's just it's, I'm dissing me. I'm not used to doing like a – I think it's like a 10-hour show on Saturday or something. Anyway, at least Joss will be there, so maybe we'll both take a nap 
somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> that feels odd. But yeah, just set up a little bed separate, under the table. Separate areas. That we'll go. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I jumped in on that one. But, um, no, I was just going to, uh, I, yeah. I wanted to mention the Kickstarter, which we do have a link in the description of the video. You can click on that link to, to check out the Kickstarter, but you want to talk, talk about El Morto and what this new version of the comic is and everything? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so um, this is the second graphic novel. It's like a 10 graphic novel series. Of the plan is so don't ever start that, you know, start something like that when you're in your 20s or 30s. But what the hell, you know, I got at least 10 stories to tell big, you know, big stories. So this is the second book in the series. Um, El Muerto is um, it's my signature character. Uh, in fact, next year, it's going to be 25 year anniversary of the character. So um, looking forward to that. Um, so the second graphic novel in this in this series, I kind of retooled it a few years ago. So I started going to graphic novel uh, format and kind of redrew the early issues. You know that thing, like, well, the early stuff doesn't look as sharp as it, and it's not as written as good and whatever. Um, so it's a good time for people to jump on who've never heard of El Muerto. Um, pick up the second book on the Kickstarter. You can also pick up the first graphic novel. Um, so the second book is more of a horror story. Um, El Muerto, really quick, for, for those who don't know, it's about this young man. He's born on Day of the Dead, November 2nd. On his 21st birthday, he gets killed in a car accident on his way to his birthday party, and he gets resurrected by the Aztec god of death. So I had wanted to do a comic back in the, the mid-90s, uh, my own comic, self-publish, own, create our own. But I want to do something using Mexican culture, Aztec mythology, Day of the Dead folklore. So that's how I came up with El Muerto. So... Um, the second story finds him in Mexico, and he comes across this uh, woman. Her, her infant has been kidnapped, and it turns out that the thing that's kidnapped it is, uh, you know, a local legend, kind of like the Llorona. If you guys know the Llorona legend, um, there was a movie, I think, by, by Blumhouse a couple of years ago. But it's like this very potent myth, I guess, throughout Latin America, but definitely growing up as a kid here, Mexican kid here in the U.S., we heard it as kids parents would scare us with it but the legend is this woman there's variations of it but this woman she drowned her children and then so then she laments it and now she's you know now in the afterlife she's like roaming the countryside calling out for her children and she apparently steals other children so uh parents would use that as a hey don't go outside although you don't have to get you so it was a very potent myth um Hey, Salazar Nation. He knows about Yorona. Hey, Frank, good to, good, to, good to have you on board here. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to create my own version of uh, La Yorona. So it's this a woman called La Doña Maclovia La Dolente. Real fanciful name. So anyway, uh, El Muerto and this uh, young woman, they have to enter this haunted Spanish uh, hacienda up in the mountains of northern Mexico where there shouldn't be a hacienda. And um, that's, the, that's the basic premise of it. But yeah, it's, it's definitely all more of a horror comic than the first book, um, which is really exciting. I mean, I grew up on, like everybody here, I'm sure I grew up on monster films, uh, the old Universal monster films, Hammer films. Um, I love Tim Burton movies, uh, John Carpenter films. So if you like those, like people say, you know, how you describe your comic. If you like the Tim Burton movies and the Smiths and the Cure and classic Spider-Man comics, El Muerto might be for you. So please uh, check out the link there at the bottom of the Kickstarter. You can get the graphic novel. You can get the previous graphic novel and uh, stickers and buttons and all that fun stuff that everybody seems to like. So please check it out. Yeah, I can't wait. I backed it. And, and now that you go into a little more about it, I mean, those, that's, those are things that are all, yeah, I love all that stuff. So but that's going to be awesome. No, no, right. Uh, yeah, you're very, yeah. You're very universal uh, appeal, uh, a lot of these things. So thanks. All right, so let's kind of dive into the topic. And this one was kind of suggested a little bit by Jim. Um, and the topic tonight is just artists helping artists. And, and it kind of it kind of dovetails into the background between both of you guys. And it because originally I was going to talk about the Latin comic uh, scene that you guys kind of helped come about. And uh, and Jim suggested that, you know, make maybe make a little broader. And what that, you know, over over the years, what that has become as far as, your guys friendship and just and just you know which i i understand is a little well you can dive into it but understand it's a little basically it's just like you guys don't get to hang out that much but you're always there you know 
helping each other online or whatever, build, you know, working through with the community and everything like that. So um, I don't know. Uh, do you want, Jim, do you want to kind of? Uh, well, for one, I was told tonight's topic was top five Jim Lujan movies. <laughs> Are we not? We're not doing that. OK, I, all right. Um, we've only seen yeah. two of them, so we can't really. Well, here's here's the secret. Javier, Javier and I can't stand each other. But <laughs> we, we also can't stand to be away from each other. So it's a weird dynamic. But yeah. Uh, no, um, so one of the things, um, it's very strange and it's kind of very cool. Uh, Javier, Aaron, and I can go months without seeing each other. And then we'll just, one of us will pick up the phone and instantly like, hey, what are you working on? What are you working on? It's like a, it's almost like a creative recharging of the battery, but then you're also recharging the other guy's battery. It's kind of like, um, we have that type of relationship where, because we both are very honest with each other's with opinions. Um, and so when it's kind of nice, because when Javier says that he likes something, it's genuine. It's not like he doesn't uh, placate me or, or like, you know, oh yeah, that's not, that's good. That's good. I mean, he'll, <laughs> here's how I'll be like, Javier, here's this idea and I have blah, blah, blah. And, then, and Javier will go, yeah. I mean, is that, I mean, I mean, I guess if you, and I could already tell, uh-oh, you know, but, but at least he's, he, I mean, he's, he's totally honest. And I think that um, every artist needs in their life somebody that's like that, that's totally honest, um, not out to nitpick, you know, for no reason, but just gives you their honest, honest opinion. And, uh, and I like that. And then we, like I said, we can both count on each other to pick up the phone or like we'll go grab, grab a bite once in a while. But it's not like every day, you know, we don't do it every day. It's it, we go long stretches without, you know, but uh, that's because I have COVID, that's why. <laughs> but those, lo those long stretches, I mean, like you could be six months and like, yeah, Jim calls and like Jim said, and then we literally just picking up where we left off. It's, you know, we might catch up, hey, what have you been up to? I got COVID, oh, too bad for you, I haven't. And then we get back to the... <laughs> What, what I like about our dynamic, though, because um, I have a lot of comic, like I'm sure you guys, you got other comic book friends. Mm -hmm. I'm a comic book guy. Jim's an animation guy, um, and he's done comics. But so I have a lot of friends that we, you know, we're comic guys and we talk comics. But I, I, I like that we have this different coming from a different um, field, so to speak. But um, yeah, the honesty, you know, you know, I may say something to him, and he might just say something different, like. Like I'll, I'll I'll give him the pitch. He's all, oh, and then he might he might change the pitch. Oh, so you mean this? Or that? I go, well, I didn't mean that, but I like that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but it's being honest with one another, and of course, probably each other's biggest fans, which is which is genuine and such. Yeah, but, yeah, absolutely. We're due um, for a meal. Sit down, meal, by the way. Yeah, and and, and if you haven't uh, caught Los Comics, his channel on YouTube especially the creator commentary, like he had mentioned earlier. Yeah. I have to say Javier is probably the best at doing that of anybody that I know. Cause it's, I told him it's like, um, it's like almost like a, a, a big brother reading you a story and explaining it as, as you go along. It's really like, well, nobody knows his work better than him. So it's kind of neat to listen to him and, and, and it's really, um, it's a, also a great thing when you're working on stuff to listen to, because it's it's strangely motivating to, to hear somebody um, that believes in their work and can express those uh, those opinions about their own work, and it's really interesting. It's kind of like when Corey talks to me about adult films, you know, just in depth. <laughs> that, oh, there he goes, bye, Corey. <laughs> no, um, but I, I really enjoy it. I, I immediately, when I saw that, um, I hopped on on the horn and and, and told Hav. I had, I had to tell him how much I appreciated that, you know. And then again, I, I'm always honest with stuff because, like, I'm not into manga. I'm just not. Or anime. Some of it's all right, but I'm not. It was not my thing. And um, and I know Hav like totally you dig some of it. You know, Devil Man. It's like you know, I can't see Devil Man without thinking of Javier, which sounds weird, but um, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, 
but like I'll, I won't like be like, oh yeah, I love I love the manga stuff. I love. I, I mean, I'll just like we're honest with you. I tell them, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I didn't really watch too much of that, but this, you know, yeah. this I really got into. And then like Javier would tell me, yeah, Jim, like I really don't like your films, but I mean, the way you you just bounced back from COVID, I thought was really cool. Well, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 there, just, there was one film of his that, I forgot which film Jimmy but there was one yeah. film and then that's the one where we had talked and I go you know what I gotta be honest like I, I wasn't feeling that one and you know and I told him what points I wasn't but again you, like I don't said, remember which one it was I, the, I blocked that no, out I don't I don't I blocked that I, said, oh, I, that film. I deleted it you yeah. deleted it yeah <laughs> you, gave, you gave me a lobotomy too I don't remember it I woke up one day yeah. with a scar like no, but you know, you know, it, it it is a fine line for artists supporting or helping each other. It's a very fine line to just kind of blowing smoke, you know. And I think all of us have had the family members where you show, we'll show them things and like, oh, those are neat. That's really, yeah. neat. you know. And that's nice, but it doesn't it doesn't really ultimately help. You really want somebody that you, that you have a danger of that person not liking it and telling you that they don't like it. But um, I mean, gosh, Javi and I have known each other for since two or two thousand seven, six, you know. And uh, so I think we just naturally developed that kind of a relationship. You know, how, how do you, I how think do you... artist support like? you know, to underscore your, your topic. I mean, it's not just rubber stamping, like Jim said, everything that your friend does just, yes, yes, it's great. It's great. You know, offer some advice or a different perspective on something that maybe they're not seeing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that, that's, that's true support. I think. Yeah. Like tonight we should go around and say what the worst thing that each of us, <laughs> thinks the other one has done. That's true. I, I think we need to crap on each other a lot more is basically <laughs> yeah. what it comes down. That's no, I get, I get what you're saying though. Cause there's a, there's a fine line between getting like encouragement from somebody who's just like, Oh, everything you do is great. Cause then it's kind of meaningless. Um, as opposed to like the friend, you can show a script and they'll read it and be like, Oh, there's like a plot hole here. Like, you know, the conversation yeah. gets a little awkward in this point and stuff like that because mm -hmm. they're actually helping you be better, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, um, that's a, that's, those are valuable people to have. Yeah. Yeah. And there's also the type of, there's also the type of critic that I don't like, the type of critic that by you giving them something to, hey, what do you think of this? They're immediately looking like, oh, what, can, what do I get to nitpick about? Yeah. What, you know what I mean? Like they're looking for the, the, the negative part of it. And yeah. uh, that's no fun. Either. That's like the flip side of uh, everything's great. You know? Yeah, for sure. Like the the person who's like, by the way, like you've already printed something. And at that point, they're critiquing and you're like, well, let's, oh, let's, nice. let's just say it. Gary Hodges. Yeah, Gary. Basically. Gary Hodges. <laughs> so Gary, nice. this is actually an intervention. This isn't an, an intervention without yeah. that. You're not you weren't in. though. Exactly. <laughs> an outervention. Outer vention. So Scott, what well, you were going to ask how we met or something like that? Yeah, I was just curious where you met because I know there. I know you at one point there was uh, you guys kind of had didn't you? Wasn't there some sort of organization? Yeah, before yeah. before Tinder was around. <laughs> um, you no, know, um, we actually. I was thinking about this the other day. How um, we met through a mutual friend, Graciela Rodriguez, because she went to some convention that you were at. I don't remember which one it was. It might have been, been Comic-Con, San Diego. It might have been LA Comic-Con, maybe. Okay, yeah, she went there and then she says, oh, there's this artist, you gotta you gotta check this guy out. And, and then, um, and, and it's funny, funnily enough, it was the same show that she met, I think she met Jose at that show. Cabrera. Yeah. Is it the, Yeah, it might have been. It, Comics are a small world because I knew Jose Cabrera separately like a year earlier, but never met him. It's weird. And then Graciela meets Javier. Then I meet Javier. Then I find out he knows Jose. And it's like, 
all everything. Jeremy Burley is connected in this too. In this okay. movie, yeah, we definitely had Jeremy. On yeah, the he, he, I met him then at that same time too. I've known Jeremy a long time. Um, but yeah, then then Javier and I met, and and I hope he doesn't mind telling me this story, uh, me telling my initial impressions of him. But <laughs> we're totally wrong. When I met Javier, he I just remember he had a blazer on and a t-shirt because you were doing a um um like a, a lecture about El Muerto, the film, and you were talking about your experiences with it. And and I went to this thing that this this foundation called New Vein that Javier was kind of a part of a little bit. And I watched, and that was the first time I met Javier. He was speaking in front of the crowd and everything. And remember he had a beard and he had his blazer and t-shirt. And I he just for some reason I thought, oh this dude's like a he's a hardcore partier. I could tell. <laughs> I can tell this dude. He's probably gonna go do a bump of coke in the parking lot right now. Yeah, I I, I could tell this guy. I could tell. I was like so wrong because he doesn't do coke. He does. He, does, uh, he shoots up. So <laughs> no, but um, no, I was like totally wrong. Like my impression was total totally wrong. And then there were a, a few other events coming up that you had you were gonna do, and, and I started going to see those. And I just thought it was real. Even back then, I thought it was really inspiring to hear. Um, Javier talk about his work because he believes in it and he, yeah. and he knows what he's talking about. And, and um, I just thought, wow, that's a really, that's a, a really um, noble thing to, to respect your own work like that. You know, it's a, uh, I mean, it's one thing we are all self deprecating, but, or self defecating, but, um, <laughs> but I mean, it, I, I really, he speaks about his work in a way where it's not um, hot air. You know, it's just like, it's just very interesting. So I thought that, so yeah, my initial, that's how we met. My initial impression of him was way off, well, way off. So, uh, well, so have, I like, go ahead. I like that Jim told me that after a couple of times we met, he goes, you know, when I, <laughs> I, I thought you were like John Belushi. I go, he's serious. Like, yeah, I thought you were like the party hard and you know, da, 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 this and that. I go, wow, that's hilarious to me. <laughs> But that's his honesty. I love that. Like, yeah, you should tell me what you thought about me. What I liked about Jim and over the years, um, I really noticed it over the years because, like, most of my best friends are artists. I'm sure you guys have the same thing. Oh, yeah. And we artists, we have a lot of um, not just the issues in our back issue bin, but, you know, <laughs> things, right? Little mental ticks and tempers and self, you know. Jim has always been to me, probably one of the more level-headed guys uh, for being an art, for being an artist. Um, I don't know. I've never found him racked with any type of, you know, anger or like, you know, the stuff that fuels a lot of us anger or angst or, you know, anti-socialness or any of that. Um, it's kind of weird. <laughs> like artists are weird, but actually he's weird because he's actually no, he's like Marilyn from uh, what is it? The Munsters. <laughs> You know, he's like just the straight normal one, but then that makes him the weird one of, of all of us. So um, many people compare me to her. Things. So many people compare me <laughs> to her all the time. She's a little prettier, but I mean, you're 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 getting there. The By people. the way, I'm I'm saving all my angst and anger for the tower. So I've already got my sniper rifle. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> you heard it here. But first, I appreciate. So. <laughs> but Jim, I always I always appreciate your love. You know, sometimes because sometimes I'm going off, and then you know I talk to him, and he can just kind of. You know, yeah, I, I don't know if he brings I, me down. I don't, I don't know if he cons me down, but I mean, so I, know, I've never sure. asked you this, and I've never asked any of you guys this, but like, I don't come from like an artist family. Like, 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 there's a lot of people in my family that are musicians and and are really good artists, but we don't come from like, oh yeah, you're supposed to make a living doing art, or you're supposed to, you know, that's that's a thing. It's always like, oh, you do on the side. Um, and there's people that come from environments where they're like, like if your father or mother is a famous actor or actress, then you have it in your head like, oh, this could be real. I could really do this, you know. And um, in my head, it would be more like, no, you can go put out fires like your father. <laughs> I'm, I'm, or, always, I'm curious about that because I, I mean, I my parents weren't artists. I mean, so I mean, and I don't in my experience that seems to be a rarity like every once in a while when i hear oh this artist their 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 parent was actually a, a, a whether it's famous artist or just an artist themselves i don't hear about that that much i mean i know 
yeah, I don't know. I mean, what about you guys? Um, I, I mean, the only ones I can think of are like famous people, the yeah. kids, are famous people. But I think most artists and most artists that we know, most of them make a living doing something else besides their art only. Right. Or if they're making a living with their art, it's not for just their own stuff. They're doing, you know, work for hire. Yeah. yeah. You know, or adult films like <laughs> all of us. That's true. Corey. Starring in or like animated in the mirror? <laughs> <laughs> Both. So I, it's interesting because like my dad had been a graphic designer before I was born. Wow. And so when I actually, and, and then went into different fields and stuff like that later in life. And so when I was getting interested in art, he was like excited for me. And yet he also had this kind of sadness because he's like, he had worked in commercial art. So he was like, uh, like, I guess you like art. That's cool, but it's really hard. <laughs> like, you know, so he had a very realistic view of, yeah, I get it of, of like industry. So he had this, it was like a mix of encouragement and stuff like that, but also of like trepidation. Cause it's just a rough way to make a living. Um, but yeah, um, that's, that's my closest experience to it. Yeah. And it didn't scare you away. I, I think when, it, it, I mean, you guys can probably say this, but it's like, you know, I think like comics animation both have a similar thing where you're going to kind of do them. If you, if you have the bug, you're like, there's nothing that's going to get, get you to not do it. You know, I don't know. Do you guys find that? Well, like I said, you got the bug. I see that was a dig towards my <laughs> condition. Okay. No, that's um, great. When you get the COVID. <laughs> you know what? I, we talked about this a long time ago. When I, Before I ever did animation, I thought I was going to do graphic novels and comics and stuff. I, I thought I would get uh, – and then I realized about a month into it, it's, I was like, this is too much work. Like, this is – like, if I'm going to do this much work, I'm, I'm going to make it animated. Like, make a film. Yeah, I was going to say, this is too much yeah. work. I'm going to go is, into animation. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is too much work. I should do animation because it's easier. <laughs> it's a do triple the work. It's a different beast. It's a totally different. Because, again, I'm coming from the perspective where I, I like doing music. And I like, you know, and I like, I want to tell a story, you know, a film. I want to make a film. And um, and I thought, well, I could just do this with anim with a comics with I, th that could be my form to tell my films you know and i and i started doing that and it's just i don't know it's a different part of your, the brain i have crazy respect for that and and crazy respect for how javier does it too because it it feels very seamless effort, effortless when you do it it flows very well it doesn't feel forced well i mean it, it's something you love you know it's like but um, in my family, yeah, there's, there was no artist in the family. I mean, my parents um, were not art. My daddy, you know, did not even music. Um, and neither of their parents, because we're because we talking about, no, no, our, our parents weren't artists. My older brother is the one who inspired me to be an artist because um, when I was a kid, I've said this a million times, you know, he gave me one, he gave me like his big stack of comics. He was, he was already getting in high school. So nice. comics are for kids. Good for me. Yeah. yeah, so I got these, um, <laughs> like, he was buying between, like, 1969, 70, 71, DC and Marvel. So I got, like, Neil Adams, uh, Batmans, the, the last of the Kirby FF, stuff like that. So he gave me his comics, and then he used to draw, and he quit, he kind of quit drawing. He used to draw these, like, real cartoony sport figures, baseball guys, football guys, but real, really big shoulders, tiny feet, you know. Um, so... You know, my older brother gives me comics, and then I start drawing because, well, he's drawing. I want to draw, too, you know. Um, and then he kind of went into building models in, in high school and then got into sports. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really the only, um, yeah, creative artist, professional artist in, in, in the family for you know, at least a generation or two from what my parents told me. So um, that's an interesting topic. I mean, it's not something people. That's, the, that's how I got started, too, is Javier's brother. <laughs> oh my gosh yeah. it turns out he just did that for everyone like yeah. just traveling the globe handing hey kid check out these comics so uh, as a he little he opened his trench coat and there's comics <laughs> <laughs> word on the street is you want some comics 
as a little kid, I remember my, well, my oldest brother is bit was a musician. And then my older brother was uh, into like, he was an athlete, but he was also into like, dr like dr drama. And we had this thing called the Trojanaires at high school. It was like, they were like, um, it was like a, uh, they sang. This is when Queen was real big. I remember them singing a lot of Queen songs and a lot of, <laughs> you know, Steve Miller, you know, songs. And, um, but I just watched them. Like, I just thought it was natural, like to make music or make stuff. And they used to make these little home, like almost like, before Weird Al, they would make these like parody tapes. Like they would take a song and they would sing over it. Like uh, Peter Frampton's uh, uh, Do You Feel Like I Do? But they would replace the lyrics with some filthy. And I would find these tapes as a kid and listen to them. I was like, oh my God, this is great. So I think that inspired me early on about the, the music part of it. And then I've always drawn. I've drawn since I was four years old. First drawing I ever had, my sister kept it. It was a I did a, a water, I know this is very advanced for a four year old, a watercolor and then inked over it with a, a pen of Batman. It was Batman, but it looks just like a blur. <laughs> and then there's some really good line work, but that you can't tell what it is, but, it, and then it says Batman on the bottom. Um, but, uh, so I did create Batman at four years old. That's true. <laughs> That's where my money comes from. But uh, finger to eat you're your not heart the only out. You're not the only person who lies that says they created Batman. <laughs> That's true. Okay, uh, <laughs> that is true. Dun, 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 dun. That's, That's the true. Finger, by the way. I have I have as much I have as much uh, claim to it as, as he does. Um, but so like I think both of us and all of us here were born with a creative bug. I really do believe it's part of our DNA. But one of the things that Javier and I have talked about for a long time is there's a thing. Not all families, but there's a thing in the Latino culture kind of where it's kind of like, well, who do you, th oh, look at you, the big artist, you know, like there's a little bit of that. Whereas in some families, like, like, for example, we talked about this um, in like a Jewish family, lots of Jewish families. If a guy wants to go into writing or if he wants to go into entertainment, they're like, well, if you're going to do it, you better like do it right. Whereas in uh, other cultures, it's not that. It's like, you know, you need studies. No, you need this or that. Or in my case, just stay out of jail. So <laughs> that, That's very true. I got to I gotta agree with that. It's, I come from Mexican family. Like, you know, it's, yeah, your parents are like, oh, okay. It's like, but, you know, I want you to have a real job to have a real success because, um, you know, art is, is never really seen. I'm sure in a lot of communities, it's like, oh, he just draws. Like, well, yeah, but that's like, he just pulls teeth. He's a dentist or he just fixes cars or she... Well, I draw, I create, I, you know, I mean, you know, I, I teach, I teach comic workshops and, uh, and such. And, you know, because where I, where I live and such, I mean, I, I happen to have a lot of Latino families and kids that I teach and such. And when there, there's some really good one, like, you know, we're talking natural born, whatever you want to call it. And I tell the parents, I got, you know, I got to say, hey, look, you know, the kid's really young, but as they get older, if they really love continue to draw, I mean, there's a lot of fields they can get into. It's not just, like, oh, you don't want Juanito to do comics. Maybe he or she can um, design clothes for film or they can design characters or video game, you know, billion dollar industry. They could, if your kid has a talent to create, and we're talking visually draw, um, don't discount it, parents. Um, so, I, you know, I'm always grateful to see parents encouraging their kid. But they go, oh, no, no, we take him home and we're always buying him paper. We're always buying her pencils and crayons. I go, good for you, like. You know, I love seeing parents do, who do that because yeah. I'm sure so many kids, like Jim's saying, maybe they get like, well, don't draw too much, you know, spend more time studying and doing Te teachers and too. Um, teachers are important too because I, I fifth grade, yeah. Mrs. Bloomfield, very smart lady, a uh, little four foot lady from New York. And uh, I remember, you know, when I would get caught drawing in, in class, or usually somebody would get caught with one of my drawings in class. <laughs> and she was very smart. She's like, okay, let's harness this power for good, not evil. And she made me uh, put on a like a puppet play. Like I had to write the script and design the characters. And then I got three other people in my class besides myself. And we did like, we had like a little board and we did these little puppets. It was a leprechaun. It was a St. Patrick's Day parade. But, uh, and I remember I was, it was fifth grade and, and my script that I wrote dealt with, um, 
abortion and no, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> oh my gosh, it was very advanced. <laughs> no, but it it people loved it. Like that I, that gave me the bug for like I need to be involved with an audience, not just in my room drawing. I need to and and that one teacher, she kept me off of the tower. You know, she <laughs> she um, she really did help uh, point me in a positive direction with with, you know, showing it's possible. So can you imagine coming from a family or a culture that is surrounded by the, it's possible? Yeah, that, that's really empowering to to a kid. So like what Javier has done with these um you know, doing these workshops and these, these kids will never, oh, there's going to be a handful of these kids that will never forget it. And it's going to change the course of their lives. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you think that the, the reason why I, I think that the reason why so many artists um, find it hard to make a living doing it is because they're just, because of all the negative, they're, they're constantly told that you can't do this by a lot of people. And I think, I think if there was more positive messaging, a lot more people, you know, it would have the confidence to pursue a career in art and, and, and be successful at it. Uh, I mean, the one thing that I always tell, tell people, if, if, if there's any doubt on whether you can be a professional artist is just look, I mean, basically look around you. I mean, it's, it's I mean, people have a narrow, a really narrow scope on what they think artists can do professionally when in fact go to a grocery store and everything, every product there is created by an artist. Uh, every, anything you look at is created by, is designed by somebody. So, I mean, art is everywhere and so people have to create this that just sometimes people aren't, aren't looking deep enough into all the different opportunities there are out there um, creatively. Yeah. And like you know, what, Scott, um, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Huh? Well, I just want to say what Scott was saying, like, you know, maybe people get beat down by the comments. It even starts before that, because what I notice as a teacher and maybe any parents out there, I don't know, second, third, fourth graders, the whole class, 30 kids, they'll all draw. You know, hey, it's drawing time. They'll all pull out the paper and draw. And then I don't know what the grade level is. As they get a little older, some will quit drawing. But I don't mm -hmm. think it's because people say they don't draw. It's because they're they look at the kid next to them or she might, Oh, you know what? She draws better. He draws better. I'm not that good. So I'm not an artist. So then the kid stops drawing because then you go a couple of grade levels higher. Okay. Let's all draw. Oh no, I, yeah. I, I got to draw. And there'll be yep. two or three guys like us dorks. It's a funny. Draw. Yeah. So the funny thing kids is on the, their own. Yeah. They just feel um, not as confident. They feel, you know, someone's better than, than, you know, there's, a bit, there's always, there's always going to be a better drawer than another kid, but that shouldn't, you know, dissuade you i think that's a it's a theory i've always had about art as far as everybody draws that's, and then they start not drawing that's huge though because like you know even at this age like it's like i see artists who work professionally and like will ruin themselves by overly comparing themselves to other artists at like at our age so like for a kid yeah, to do that do it. yeah it um it, it's a weird thing too because it is that cult, like there's a bit of culture with that too, where like um, the idea of art as like this talent that you're born with. And like, so people have this idea of like the, the inspired artist who just, you know, busts out like starry, starry night, like in a fit of inspiration. <laughs> and instead of like realizing that it's like, there's a, a huge amount of craft to it and dedication and like repetition and learning like involved in it. I mean, definitely you know, I mean, how you can tell us, but it's like, you know, teaching art, like there's some kids that are super gifted with it, mm -hmm. but most people can learn to draw if they keep at it. Like, I think, you know, I really believe that. Yeah. Going back, going back to what you were talking about, how like when the, like you said, when kids were younger, they, you know, everyone draws and stuff like that. And yeah. so it's sometimes when I get the question like, Oh, well, uh, when did you start drawing? It's kind of like, no, the question is, when did you stop drawing? Because everyone yeah. drew when they were young. Mm -hmm. And then people oh, just... Oh, snap. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, going back to what we were talking about a little bit earlier about um, about teachers and things like that, and and students who are might be better than other students, 
there's also something in everyone's mind when they see somebody that's better than them. That it's kind of like fight or flight. You could either get intimidated and just be like, forget it. I'm putting my pencil down. Or you can look at it and go, oh, man, I want to do that. I remember there's this kid, Antonio, that in, um, I think it was like ninth grade. And he was in my art class, little, little scrawny little kid. And I remember he drew this Michael Jordan. When Michael Jordan first came into the league. And he, I think it was Michael Jordan shooting a free throw. And he's kind of had, and just the expression and the and the lighting and everything on Michael Jordan and the chain he, and the deed, it just, I, I looked at it and I thought I in a million years could never do that. But instead of just throwing the pencil down, I kind of felt like, like, wow, that's possible. Like, you can get that good, you yeah. Know? You know, and I never did, but you, at least I had that feeling. <laughs> but um, but it's also, I don't know. It's it's weird. It's like it, it's like artistic. The artistic life is is uh, it's like it's kind of like a flower. You know, it can wither or it can die, or you can you can yourself just cut it, and it never grows. Or you can just see what happens. But that's yeah, teachers. Uh, other artists, friends, family, you know, it's all very important to uh, to be encouraging. And I think that maybe that's why people always would tell us, oh, that's really neat. That's not, you know, because they want to be encouraging. So I don't know. It's, uh, I, had a, uh, I had a similar instance like you, Gemma, uh, you know, your art adversary, Antonio, was that what the name? Mm -hmm. So like in grade school, I was like, you know, those two of us are really good artists. But you know, then in, in in middle school, I was pretty pretty good. And then one day in art class, you know, pe you know, all the students are there, and anyone's doing their first artwork. And then there was this one. I'll say his name, Rudy. Um, he drew. I mean, he's my age, but he was drawing as good as uh, his work around me, kind of like a Richard and Wendy uh, Peeny Elf Quest. He kind of drew like these fairies, these elves, but I mean, really textured and like. Wow, how can he draw that good? He's my age, and I thought I was good. So I, unlike Jim, he said you should get inspired. I was kind of like on my own, like Josh was saying. I was like, oh man, I'm not that good. I, I, I was the king of the hill till this guy showed up. Um, but you know, I was just being rational. Okay, well that's how he draws. That's his level, and I got my level. But it didn't. It didn't make me stop drawing. I just kept. I didn't try to aspire to draw his style. I kept doing my style. Um, but yeah. There's always the one person you, you know you're, you're you're on your high horse for a couple of years as a kid, and then you meet like someone. Wow, that guy is super skilled. Oh yeah, and it still yeah, happens, Josh. Like you're saying, at our age, I mean, oh yeah, forties or fifties, everything's fine. And like I go to a convention, I'll I'll probably see some people tomorrow. Yeah, and like oh my gosh, they're twice as young and three times as good, and there's they got they got more sales than I do, but then you have to just balance out and, okay well i'm gonna keep doing what i do you know and good yeah to them good for them yeah and it's like that um the it's it's like it, most of us as artists we all have that moment where we're like the big fish in the small pond right like we're the artists in our school or whatever and maybe there's like one or two other guys that you're like kind of head to head with and you can be a little competitive you know but then it's like you get more and more advanced in your art and you start i mean it just if your goal is just to decimate other artists with your skills, yeah. you're always going to reach the guy who just destroys everything you do because they're great. And, and like you, so it's like this weird thing of like, uh, trying to instill the fortitude to like, be able to look at a wall of, of like, if you had to put your art on a wall next to a bunch of artists, be able to critique your stuff, try to be ambitious, try to grow, try to be better look at the people who are better than you try to learn from them. Right. Um, look like, but at the same time, don't let it destroy you and like, and, and, and take away your own like journey and your own appreciation of other artists who are out there doing that hustle too. It's, it's a weird balance, you know, but I do think it's, it's definitely something that like, as you, especially as, as the pond becomes an ocean and suddenly, you know, yeah. like LA comic con, like it, it, you're right. i like, that whole place is going to be filled with artists of all variety. And anytime I do a con, I feel this mix of inspiration and also like, 
oh wow there's some guys out there that make me want to quit they're so good you know <laughs> so yeah yeah believe me josh when you get older it's even worse because like you said there's just younger artists coming in all the time well you know and, um, you know where i kind of feel that now nowadays um <clears throat> i don't know maybe you guys feel this too but i it seems like with age the, and the younger groups coming up, it seems like the sensibilities change, the humor changes, the tastes change, and you kind of become like, oh, that you're you're of this thing of that was back then, you know, was was the the cool thing. Now this is the cool thing. I first felt that with um, the early advent of Adult Swim. I remember going to a Comic Con panel and it was a Aqua Teen Hunger for Aqua Teen Hunger Force and some other around that era, and I didn't know what it was. And I went. And I'm like, oh, I can't wait. I lo- I think I love Adult Swim, and I went. <laughs> and I just remember thinking, wow, like I'm like out of step because not like I'm not laughing at any of this stuff. I mean, I could appreciate some of it, but like the audience was just howling, laughing at at you know. It's like somebody would say pencil sharpener, and then they'd be, ah, you know, and I'd be like, "Oh my god!" I'm like, "Wait, that's the first time I realized," and that was a big that was a big moment for me because I immediately in the next few weeks, I mean, it was like a crisis, you know, like am am I just not fit? Am I not fitting in? And then that's when I decided. I I told myself. Well, you kind of have to work in a bubble. You have to just entertain yourself, mm-hmm. happy with what you do, and then see what happens with it. And and I think just because of our ages, I think we're all kind of in that because there's a whole nother league of people coming in. Oh, yeah. I also made the decision to uh, not to be the angry old man. Like, I will never criticize um people that stuff that i don't get the the new breed mm-hmm. everybody but gary the, gary for gary well gary's like that's his own you know hentai is his own thing okay but uh, <laughs> but like i'm never going to create like if the anime like um the shows that are out now um that i don't get you know like the animated shows there's 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 a few of them um that i'm like i i, I can appreciate it but i don't get it i mean it's not my thing but I'm not going to be like that's stupid. What that's people don't have taste nowadays because that's that's the get off my lawn guy, and I don't want to be that guy. So I just basically yeah. yeah, just mind your own business, stay in your own bubble, and then find like minded people like that are on this this show right here that can appreciate your stuff and just stick with them. So I create for you. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, but I don't. You guys my defense at all. My defense mechanism of against like looking at the younger stuff and not getting it. It's like, well, okay, fine. You have your Rick and Morty, but if it survives 50, 60 years, like the Adams family or the speed racer cartoon or something, then we'll know if it was any good. <laughs> it, it might hobby. It just, if it's something that's not, it might, our, yeah. it, it might. Um, because like the backstreet boys are considered classics now, you know, you know, there's, there's a lot of that stuff. I mean, stuff, you know what else too? It, it's it's when you're young, a certain age, and you graft onto something. You, that's the cool stuff for you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because there's people that hate punk rock, like the progressive guys hate punk rock because it's not their, you know, their era. And then the guys who um, like punk rock will hate like real corporate music because it's not their era. And the people that like corporate music hate, you know. Um, you know, like uh, mumble rap or whatever, you know, it just keeps going on and on and on like a cycle. But the one thing that we can all agree is that Nickelback is the greatest punk band of all time. <laughs> I had to get that in. Definitely. Uh, I, I wanted to, I, I know we're, we're going to want to wrap up soon because we've got people that have conventions tomorrow, but I wanted to, uh, something that uh, Javier said about uh, just about, you know, seeing these, the, the you know, these younger artists at, you know, conventions and, and just the skill level. And I think a lot of that, and it, I think it goes back to kind of what we're talking about was hardest helping artists, because when we were kids, we didn't really have as much access to other artists because we didn't have the internet. So, 
you know, I mean, so, and, and since the internet's come along, I mean, I, you know, we're all, you know, we all have YouTube channels. We all, all put out content and everything like that. Um, and, and we take in content as well and it's improved our work and that, and I, so I think, I think kids today have a, a definite advantage because they can just, they, they, they the, everything's at their fingertips. So they can take a lot of, you know, I don't want to say shortcuts because these are, you know, I mean, they, they can skip a lot of the, whatever, try the things that don't work because people, you know, that just, you know, do this and, you know, and they can get all that information and, and just, just level up like, like never before. So well, show um, Nate, Nate Rivers showed his comment and I want oh, Corey to comment on that. Let's see. Oh, okay. Here, here you go. Oh, what happened? There we go. What if, what if the new breed of artists are <laughs> the AI? That's a whole other topic. We've t we've touched on a little bit before. Wow. Uh, yeah, I don't think we have time to even touch on that because we will be here know, all, right? probably all night, and we get people that gotta go. So, wow. yeah. <laughs> By the way, I Javier, think all of us would mutually agree they're not. So anyhow, <laughs> let's continue. But Javier, just because you don't That's... know you don't know Corey that well, Hav, but I'll introduce him. He's really like he's developing a lot of AI art. He's a, a big <laughs> of that. And, Huge and, fan. Huge fan. Yeah. He actually is a big fan of programming algorithms that um, that segment entire groups of people out of keys on social media. Fun funnily enough, he's just developed an NFT for Nickelback, which is really interesting. So. Yeah, actually, if you guys, I, I'm about to pump and dump an NFT, and so if you're interested... Um, <laughs> I'm in the pump phase, so uh, <laughs> I got, I'm going to oh. start my own. I'm going to start my own cryptocurrency as well. There's a coin <laughs> that I'm working on. I've got some influencers behind it. It'll be, it'll be really good. It'll be the next big thing. Yeah, it's 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 going to be the same drawing of a bee, but with the different types of glasses. And I've done forty-seven thousand of them. Really <laughs> and uh, this, this yeah, is really awesome. this is really hurtful because at one point I was I was involved in a project like that, trying to get something off the ground. But it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, in retrospect, yeah, I don't know. We'll see if I... <laughs> uh, okay, let's so let's start wrapping it up. Uh, we'll try That's to kind of do uh, you know kind of super fast uh so we can we can kind of get out of here but um let's start let's start with josh josh cool. tell people what you want to promote and yeah so um if you guys are in the la area friday saturday sunday tomorrow starting at 4 p.m pacific la comic-con come hang with me have like we're selling books and stuff like that um i know our our friend of the show a friend of jim and have uh, i think have you know lonnie lonnie Millsap's there too yeah so Honey. um yeah like a good good crew of people and like um uh, amazing artists and stuff like that so come check out our stuff um get books signed and all that fun stuff and then if you haven't yet uh get jacob's apartment or wait till la comic-con and come to my booth and, and pick it up all right, yeah, that that's my stuff. Corey, what about you? Uh, yeah, I don't have anything to promote right now other than um, I, I don't live in the garage anymore, which is nice. <laughs> but if uh, if you would like to help me reach my wildest dreams, uh, I would hope that uh, that a lot of AI would steal my work and include it in the database to be copied without compensating me. So try to <laughs> let's try to make that happen and go to CoreyKerr.com. But don't tell me about it or license anything. Just steal it. That's that's mm -hmm. what we're going for. So. <laughs> okay, Jim. <laughs> um, I got uh, the trailer for my new next film. Uh, the Night Eats Its Own will be coming out probably the next two weeks. Yes. Uh, and then the film um, is still on schedule. I'm still planning to release it like at the very, very, very end of the year. But uh, um, that's coming along. By the way, I, I think I'm going to change my name. My new name, screen name from now on is going to be Christy McNickelback. Are you sure it's not going to be the Prince of Animation? Um, you guys <laughs> oh, should check, check out yeah. Bill Plimpton's testimonial. Uh, that Jim posted too. It's pretty, pretty good enough. Uh, yeah, well, well, told me he was getting. He, um, so I I did some voices for him for his next project, and then one of the things he says, he goes, "Well, what do you want?" I said, "Yeah, you know what you could do? You could do like a little ad for me, 
at some point, you know, <laughs> whatever my, I, I, whatever you want to do, Bill, you know, I don't care. Just something promote, you know, promotional. So then he did that. He, he sent that. I was like, Oh my God, this is almost too good. This is like, Oh, uh, is this on your channel? Yeah. It's, oh, I'm going to check that it's out. It's really right. good. He did it. Yeah. It's nice. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you, Bill. On on YouTube, I haven't seen it yet. It's on YouTube and on Instagram, and uh, mm -hmm. it might even be on Facebook. But uh, yeah, you gotta check it out. It's on my Facebook on the animation Jim Lou on animation. Yeah. So Jim is now officially a prince. I am the I am the prince of animation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do we have to start calling you Lord Jim? I'm the artist formerly known as Jim. Yeah, <laughs> that's a Christy deep. Christine Nickelback. Well, that's a deep literary cat. I <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> all right. I'll help you. All right, Hop. And and, and um, before you kids. also, if there's any other thing, because we kind of closed out real quick, if there's anything that you you wanted to get out that you didn't get a chance to, as far as the topic, feel free. Any last words or anything like that you wanted to kind of tag on there before promoting what you the project. Um, no, I, I think the the summary of what I was what <laughs> I was going to say was like we were creating for ourselves, but really for a a micro small bubble of of friends you know that's kind of how it is and then other people enjoy it too you know so there's that and you know. ai is actually short for uh absent of inspiration just right <laughs> yes <laughs> wow. oh. it takes a lot of work to type the words yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the real art in it. <laughs> oh man the art of typing um yeah so please check out right we got the link down here thanks scott uh check out my youtube channel um and i have no you know i have no illusions of it's gonna have like a thousand ten twenty thousand ninety thousand subscribers but well, you got one more because i just subscribed i didn't even know about it so i subscribed so and I'm i got one more yeah <laughs> i think I, I think i mentioned to 300 thanks so thanks scott awesome um yeah, and please check out the Kickstarter down below in the show notes. That's running to it. Coincidentally, it just happens to run 30 days, so it's going to end on Christmas Eve. I don't expect too much action on Christmas Eve there, but um, you never know. It could get a Christmas miracle. Um, and yeah, I will also be at a LA Comic Con for the first time in what four or five years, whatever. Um, so, and then you can find me online Insta Instagram, Javier Los Comics. Um, maybe we can link that too later. So, anyway great talking to everybody here and especially this talk about art and being a kid and growing up and teachers inspiration it's always good conversation so thanks scott yeah thanks for coming on yeah, and, and again don't forget click on the link to the el morto kickstarters in the description of this video so click on that and check out the campaign um just uh, awesome work and like i said this is a this is a character that's that's coming up on its 25th anniversary so it's super awesome um and uh yeah so uh i wanted to thank the chat everyone in the chat thanks for thanks for tuning in uh and everyone that's going to be watching this after the fact um and then as far as me like i said if you go to if you go to circworks.com i've got my digital products are on sale right now half off until i remember to turn off my black friday sale um i get busy and then it kind of stays on for a little bit so i there's no guarantee how long that's going to be going on so might want to jump on that, that if you want to get uh, any of my digital products for making comics uh, cheaper than you will ever get them ever. Um, and then also, you know, check out, check out some of the videos here on my channel. Uh, besides that, we do the show every single week. Uh, we have a different guest on every single week. And the tricky thing is that it rotates. It's not just on this channel. It's also on Josh's channel and Corey's channel. Um, so if you want to know whose channel we're going to be on, who the guest is going to be on, what time, what day, all that stuff, uh, the best way to do that is to join our mailing list. There's also a link in the description of the video for that. If you click on that, we don't spam you or anything. Usually about a half hour before we go live, we'll send out a notification because YouTube doesn't always let you know. We'll send out that email and you will know what the topic is, guest, all that stuff. So definitely check that out. And uh, we will see you uh, next week. I believe we'll be on Josh's channel, but you know who knows if that changes, check out the, uh, you know, <laughs> check out that newsletter. So, and don't forget to check out my AI generated NFTs that are coming out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks to Jim and I got, Javier. I have, El Muerto Pogs. I have El Muerto Pogs coming out next year. So forget how you're <laughs> I kind of I kind of miss Pogs. I, I like to see some of those come back. Those yeah, I can get behind some Pog <laughs> action. That'd be awesome. All right, guys. Uh thanks again in the chat. We'll see everyone later.